Ezio collection is nearly here, and I thought, what better way to welcome back our favorite Italian assassino? <laughs> That's a Kill Connor Club joke. If you haven't watched episode 34 with Longhead Fox, go check it out, then you'll understand the joke. Good times. Good times. And I thought, what better way to welcome back Ezio Auditore than to give my top 10 favorite Ezio moments from the Ezio trilogy. Now, of course, this video is going to contain spoilers of Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, and Revelation, so if you don't want any spoilers, then leave now. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into my top 10 favorite moments from the Ezio games. So at number 10, we have Ezio becoming an assassin. And I don't mean just the ceremony. I kind of mean the whole part where Rodrigo escapes and Ezio, you know, all, the, all of the assassins come to Ezio and they kind of reveal themselves as being assassins. And it's just this amazing scene where, you know, everyone that's been guiding Ezio has actually been assassins the entire time when the Brotherhood is there and it's just a really cool reveal and a really cool moment and then of course you get the scene with Ezio at the top of the tower getting the assassin ceremony becoming an assassin and I'm pretty sure that's you know where he becomes a master assassin because you know you of course you see they use that in Assassin's Creed Brothers as the master assassin ceremony so this is the moment where he becomes you know a master assassin and it's freaking awesome and it's a really amazing scene that had so much impact when I played the game for the first time. This is for my father yeah. Paola. He's gone, but we have what we came for. No, I need to go after him. Do you really now? Or are you here for another reason, my son? Theodora, what? What are you all doing here? Perhaps the same thing you are, Ezio. Hoping to see the prophet appear. I came here to kill the Spaniard. I couldn't care less about your prophet. He never showed up. No, but you did. What? A prophet's arrival was foretold, and unbeknownst to us, here you are. Perhaps all along, you were the one we sought. Cosa? Who are you? Niccolò di Bernardo de Machiavelli. I am an assassin, trained in the ancient ways to safeguard mankind's evolution. Just like you, and each one of us here. You are all assassins? Paola. Volpe, it's true, Nipote. We have all been guiding you for years, teaching you the skills you would need to join our ranks. I think it's time. We have our prize, but there is much to be done. Come, meet us here at sunset. La shea waka umutlak bel kulun munkin. These are the words spoken by our ancestors that lay at the heart of our creed. Where other men blindly follow the truth, remember... Nothing is true. Where other men are limited by morality or law, remember... Everything is permitted. We work in the dark to serve the light. We are assassins. Nothing, Nothing is, is true. true. Everything, Everything is, is permitted. permitted. It is time, Tetsio. In this modern age, we are not so literal as our ancestors, but our seal is no less permanent. Are you ready to join us? I am. This only hurts for a while, brother. Like so many things. Benvenuto, Ezio. You are one of us now. Come, we have much to do. At number 9, we have setting sail for Cappadocia in Assassin's Creed Revelations. This scene is always so, so good because they managed to do this fantastic kind of comedy at the same time as having it incredibly badass. So, you know, Ezio, he destroys all of those ships, and then when he gets to the ship that he's sailing on, he's just like, yeah, uh, sorry for the delay. And then the camera just pulls back, and you just see 
this fucking chaos that is just happening behind the ship and it's just a great scene it just it sums up Ezio but it also manages to make us laugh as well because you know it's like wow classic Ezio and it's just this amazing funny but also badass scene yours is not a subtle approach <sighs> see sorry for the delay number eight we have the assassin's creed 2 ending now this is a scene that you know fucked with everyone from the whole you know going to assassinate rodrigo having a fist fight with the pope to having minerva show up in the vault and this brand new storyline you know happen where they first you know this is the first time Ezio hears desmond's name and everything's so fucked everything is so fucked like it's such a fantastic scene and a fantastic ending to a game and it's never not gonna give me shivers just because of remembering what it did to me the first time i played through assassin's creed 2. open damn you open it's over rodrigo no more tricks no more ancient artifacts no more weapons let us see what you are made of old man all right then, if that's how you want to play it. <laughs> you can't! You can't! It's my destiny! Mine! I am the prophet! You never were. Get it over with, then. No. Killing you won't bring my family back. I'm done. Nulla e reale. Tutto è lecito. Requiescat in pace. Greetings, Prophet. It is good you have come. Let us see it. To give thanks. We must speak. Who are you? Many names. When I died, it was Minerva. Before that, Merva and Mera, and on and on. The others, too. Juno, who was before called Uni. Jupiter, who was before called Tinia. You are... gods. <laughs> no, not gods. We simply came before. Even when we walked the world, your kind struggled to understand our existence. We were more advanced in time. Your minds were not yet ready. Still not. Maybe never. No matter. You may not comprehend us, but you will comprehend our warning. You must. A 
None of what you are saying makes sense. Our words are not meant for you. What are you talking about? There is no one else here. Enough. I do not wish to speak with you, but through you. You are the prophet. You've played your part. You anchor him, but please be silent, that we may commune. Listen. It is done. The message is delivered. We are gone now from this world. All of us. We can do no more. The rest is up to you, Desmond. What? Who is Desmond? I don't understand. Please, wait! I have so many questions! What the fuck? At number 7 we have Ezio killing Uberto Alberti. Now you know, Uberto betrayed Ezio's family, he killed his father and brothers, and you finally get to serve some justice to this Templar. And it's just the speech that Ezio gives afterwards, it's not so much a speech, more of, you know, what he says is just so special and it really... It really sets up Assassin's Creed 2 because, you know, the Auditori aren't dead and he ends up overthrowing the Templars in the end. And, you know, it really was their mistake that they didn't get to Ezio um, because this really becomes where you see Ezio's driving force and that he's determined to take out everyone responsible for the death of his father and brothers. You would have done the same to save the ones you love. Yes, I would. And I have. The Auditori are not dead! I'm still here! Me! Ezio! Ezio Auditore! At number six, we have the bonfire of the vanity speech. I think this is one of everybody's favorite Ezio speeches where he stands on the stage where his father and brothers were killed. The wisdom and the intelligence that comes from Ezio from that scene really shows his character development from the beginning of Assassin's Creed 2. He's gone through so much and he's letting everyone else know you know, what this is about, what he stands for, what the assassins stand for, and, you know, freedom and peace and free will, and it's just a fantastic, fantastic speech, and it's pulled off fantastically. Silencio! Silencio! 22 years ago, I stood where I stand now and watched my loved ones die, betrayed by those I had called friends. Vengeance clouded my mind. It would have consumed me, were it not for the wisdom of a few strangers who taught me to look past my instincts. They never preached answers, but guided me to learn from myself. We don't need anyone to tell us what to do. Not Savonarola, not the Merici. We are free to follow our own path. There are those who will take that freedom from us. Too many of you gladly give it. But it is our ability to choose whatever you think is true that makes us human. There is no book or teacher to give you the answers, to show you the path. Choose your own way. Do not follow me or anyone else. Five, we have Yusuf's death scene and the speech that Ezio gives. It always, always gives me shivers when Ezio does this speech in Assassin's Creed Revelations. He, it's one of the times in Revelations, because in Revelations, Ezio's so chilled. He's just, you know, he's been through so much and he's just doing his thing. But this is something that really sets him off. He is, he gets angry. He's so angry at Yusuf's death because he's such a good man and he was doing a good thing for the Assassins. And 
it just gets to Ezio, and you just know that shit's gonna go down. He just, he loses his shit, and he goes after the Templars, goes into the arsenal, and completely, he just kills everyone. Like, it's such a fantastic speech, and such a fantastic scene, to see this contrast between old Ezio and the anger, because you don't see that too much with old Ezio, and he really lets his expertise and his skill as an assassin shine through there, because you know that he's been holding back for the entire game, and now you're going to see Ezio's full potential in this next part of the game. You have earned your rest, brother. Requiescat in pace. Brothers, sisters, the whole city rises against us, while Yusuf's murderer waits and watches from the arsenal, laughing. Fight with me, and show him what it means to cross the assassins. At number four, we have the ending to Assassin's Creed Embers and Ezio's death. Not so much his death, but the speech he gives in the letter to Sophia. It's an absolutely beautiful speech. It's pulled off so, so well, and it's just, it, it really sums up Ezio's life, and I think that, you know, it adds so much to his character and to, you know, further games to come even, you know, after Ezio's death, just with the speech and the letter that he gives to Sophia. Get some rest, huh? <sighs> When I was a young man, I had liberty, but I did not see it. I had time, but I did not know it. And I had love, but I did not feel it. Many decades would pass before I understood the meaning of all three. And now, in the twilight of my life, this understanding has passed into containment. Love, liberty, and time, once so disposable, are the fuels that drive me forward. And love, most especially, mio caro. For you, our children, our brothers and sisters, and for the vast and wonderful world that gave us life and keeps us guessing. Endless affection, mio Sofia. Forever yours, Ezio Auditore. number three we have the final Christina memory from Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. These scenes and these memories in Brotherhood are so fantastic. They show parts of Ezio's life that we don't get to see in Assassin's Creed 2 and really add to the relationship that he had with Christina and the final one with Christina's death is such a powerful scene. It shows Ezio in a different light because, you know, we see him as this, you know, just, you know, this ladies' man, you know, all the time throughout all three Assassin's Creed Ezio games. And, you know, this is the time where we see him with Christina. And, you know, this he even says in Revelations how, you know, Christina's death kind of destroyed him in a sense. Like, he felt like he lost part of himself. And it's such a powerful scene. It's pulled off so, so well that, you know, this just had to be on the list. <coughs> Christina, hold on. I'll get you to a doctor. You're going to be all right. No, it's... I don't think I am. No! Don't go. Stay with me, Christina. It's you. Don't you know? I've always been with you. <sighs> I wish we... could have had... a second chance. Thank 
qui scali in pace, my love. And number two, we have the Assassin's Creed 2 intro. Now, even though this is my favorite of the Assassin's Creed scenes in general, in terms of Ezio as a whole, as a character, it's not my favorite scene of Ezio himself. However, it is my favorite scene of Assassin's Creed as a whole, if that makes sense. It, you know, it was the beginning of Ezio's story. It's the beginning of, you know, before everything changed, the beginning of Assassin's Creed 2. It's such a beautiful scene. It's so short. But it's so powerful and adds so much to the game. And I think a lot of people will agree that this is such a fantastic scene. And it really sets up the stage for what Ezio had to come in the future. It is a good life we lead, brother. <sighs> At best, may it never change. And may it never change us. And at number one, we have the entire Assassin's Creed Revelations ending. Now, this moment, if you can call it a moment, it's a good half hour, uh, if you include everything, it's so well executed and so well done. It ties together Ezio, Altair, and Desmond from the minute when Ezio walks into the library and he sees Altair there, and then he begins to talk to Desmond, and he understands everything so well, because I think that... Other than Des- everyone in Assassin's Creed- out of everyone in Assassin's Creed other than Desmond, Ezio understood what was happening the best. He knew everything about what happened before him, what happened to the first Civ, he knew what was going to go on in the future, he understood Desmond, the pieces of Eden, everything. And this just sums it up so well. When he speaks to Desmond, he understands what he's done in his life, he understands his role as the prophet and the conduit for the messages and what was going to happen in the future. He understood everything and it's such a fantastic scene and it shows Ezio's character development so, so well. And this has got to be my number one Ezio moment in Assassin's Creed. The end of the road. You had better come out of here. I plan to. Books, no wisdom, just you, fratello mio. Requiescat in pace, Altair. Another artifact. No, you will stay here. I have seen enough for one life. Desmond? He's talking to me? I heard your name once before, Desmond. A 
long time ago. And now it lingers in my mind like an image from an old dream. I do not know where you are or by what means you can hear me. But I know you are listening. I have lived my life as best I could, not knowing its purpose, but drawn forward like a moth to a distant moon. And here at last, I discover a strange truth. And I am only a conduit for a message that eludes my understanding. Who are we, who have been so blessed to share our stories like this? speak across centuries. Maybe you will answer all the questions I have asked. Maybe you will be the one to make all this suffering worth something in the end. Now, listen. So thank you guys for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed. Sorry if it's a little bit long. Just wanted to get all the scenes in there. If you do have any suggestions or things that I didn't include that you think should have been in the video, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Uh, you guys can have a discussion, talk about what you think was your favorite Ezio moments. It's super, super close to the Ezio collection now. Can't wait to experience all these moments again and get to play the Ezio games ever again. It's going to be a ton of fun doing the Let's Play, doing the streams, all that stuff that we have planned for content. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button because it's going to be awesome. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. And as always, I will see you all next time. Bye.